You have heard me talk about the effects of money printing, global shortages on a lot of things, substantial inflation is coming, and you got to invest to protect your cash. You might disagree with me, and you can completely ignore what I said, but I don't think you should ignore one of the most successful investors of all time, and currently the seventh wealthiest person in the world. He is here today to answer the question. Are you seeing signs of inflation beginning to increase? Warren Buffett. We're seeing very substantial inflation. It's very interesting. I mean, it, it, we're raising prices. People are raising prices to us. Uh, and it's being accepted. I mean, it's not... Uh, if we get, well, you know, take home building. I mean, uh, you know, the cost of, we've got nine home builders and, and in addition to our manufactured housing thing and then uh, operation, which is the largest in the country. So we really do a lot of housing. <laughs> the costs are just up, up, up. Steel costs, uh, you know, just every day uh, they're, they're going up. And that, it, there, there hasn't, yet been because the wage the wage stuff follows i mean if the the uaw writes a three-year contract we got a three-year contract but if you're buying steel at general motors uh or someplace you're paying more every day uh so uh it's it's an economy really uh it's red hot i mean and we weren't expecting it i mean all our companies when they th they thought when when they we're allowed to go back to work, you know, at, at uh, uh, our various operations. They were, we closed the furniture stores. I mentioned, you know, they were closed for six weeks or so on average. And they didn't know what was going to happen when they when they opened up. And, you know, they, they can't stop people from buying things. And we can't deliver them. And they say, well, that's okay. Because nobody else can deliver them either. And we'll wait for three months or something. Sort of. The backlog grows. And then we thought it would end when the $600 payments ended and I think you know around August of last year it just kept going and it, it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and I get the figures every week I call or Bumpkin calls me and we go over day by day what happened at three different stores in Chicago and Kansas City and Dallas and and it just won't stop uh, people have money in their pocket and and they pay the higher prices and and when carpet prices go up in a month or two, you know, we announced a price increase for April. For our costs are going up. Supply chain is all screwed up, you know, for all kinds of people. But it's a buy. It's almost a buying frenzy, except certain areas you can't buy yet. You, you know, you really can't buy international air travel, and there's uh, so the money is being diverted from a little, from a piece of the economy into the rest, and everybody's got more cash in their pocket than except for. Meanwhile, you know, it's a terrible situation for a percentage of the people. The, you know, this suit, I haven't worn a suit, you know, for a year practically, and that means that the dry cleaner nurse just went out of business. I mean, and nobody's bringing in suits uh, to get dry cleaned, and nobody's, nobody's bringing in white shirts uh, to get to a uh, uh, place where my wife goes. Uh, it, the, the small business person, if you didn't have takeout and delivery, services for restaurants you got killed on the other hand if you've got takeout facilities you've done you know same source sales of dairy cleaner up a whole lot and they adapted them but it's it it, it is a, not a price sensitive economy right now in the least and uh i don't know exactly how when it shows up in different price indices but there's there's more inflation going on than quite a bit more inflation going on than people would have anticipated of just six months ago or thereabouts. Yeah, and there's one very intelligent man who thinks it's dangerous. And that's just the start. Okay. Greg, you probably are in a good position. To come. Yeah, well, when I think you touched on it, I mean, when we look at steel prices, timber prices, any petroleum input, you know, fundamentally there's pressure on those uh, raw materials. I do think something you've touched on, Warren, and it, it, it goes really back to the raw materials there's a scarcity of product right now of certain raw materials 
its impacting price and the ability to deliver the end product. But, you know, that scarcity factor is is also real out there right now as, as our businesses address that challenge. And it may be the some of that's contributed or uh, arisen from the uh, storm we previously discussed in Texas. When you take down that many petrochemical plants in one state that the rest of the country is very dependent upon it, we're seeing it flow through both on price but overall in scarcity of product, which obviously go together but uh there, there's there's challenges that's for sure the message is loud and clear isn't it warren talks about a buying frenzy because people have a lot of cash in their pockets so let me show you the m1 money supply in the united states and in canada what is m1 money supply it measures the amount of cash in circulation plus the checking account balances. Here is the M1 money supply graph in the United States since the beginning of 2019. The M1 money supply had been pretty stable at around $4,000 billion before the pandemic. Then it started to increase because of all the money printing for all the pandemic support programs. See how scary the increase is since the beginning of this year? The amount of cash on the market now is 4.7 times more than before the pandemic. You see, that's why there is a buying frenzy. Let's take a look at Canada. The situation is not as bad as in the United States, but you can also see a significant increase in the M1 money supply. The amount of cash on the market now is 1.5 times more than before the pandemic with a sudden increase of that much cash in the economy. Obviously, the value of cash is going to depreciate. Let's suppose the price of things increase at 10% per year for the next three years. Prices are actually increasing at a much steeper rate than 10% right now. But let's just say 10% per year. Francis and John each have $150,000 cash right now. Francis has decided to keep the cash in his account. Each year, his cash is losing 10% of its value because things are 10% more expensive. So by the time we get to 2024, the $150,000 he has today would only be worth around $109,000. On the other hand, John has decided to purchase a $750,000 pre-construction unit. His $150,000 cash would work as their 20% deposit. So the value of his unit increased 10% per year, just like everything else. When we get to 2024, his unit would then be around $998,000. So he goes to the bank to get a mortgage for the final closing of the unit. The bank gives him 80% of the original price of the unit. That's $600,000. $150,000 from John in 2021. $600,000 from the bank in 2024. That makes up their original $750,000. Now, Let's calculate John's net worth in 2024. The unit is around $998,000. $600,000 belongs to the bank. So John has $398,000. You see, Francis and John started with the same amount of cash today. Just three years later, John is 3.6 times more richer than Francis. And the only thing he has done is to invest his cash today. You see, nothing has gone crazy about the housing market in this example. It is just increasing at the same 10% as everything else. The cost of building materials increased by 10%. Labor costs increased by 10%. And so the end product, your unit, also increased by 10% every year. But the money you invested does not just increase at 10% per year. It has increased 165% over the course of three years. $150,000 becomes almost $400,000. That is 
why real estate investing is so powerful. It is because of the leverage. You only chip in 20% of the price, but you enjoy 100% of the growth. What other investment can give you this kind of leverage? And here's the thing. When raw material prices go up, the suppliers would up their prices and the price increase propagate down to the supply chain. Eventually, consumers like you and me would see a price increase on the end product. Let's suppose raw material prices come down one day. Do you think we would see a price reduction on the end product? Or do you think each party along the supply chain would just make a little bit more profit? You see, it is easy for prices to go up, but it is very hard for them to come down. If they ever come down at all, I hope you realize how dangerous it is to keep cash when there's an abundance of cash in the market. Okay. And the primary purpose of investing is to protect your wealth so it doesn't keep shrinking. You see, investing is not a luxury. It is not a nice to have, but it is a must in this pandemic economy. If you are ready to protect your wealth, you can click the link below and schedule a call with me. If you find values in this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you keep getting more and more values.